we're going to talk about what a loading coil is for an antenna. So I'm over here, I'll take you over here. I've got two antennas here, quarter wave whips, and they are the same length physically. They're half a meter long. So that's 50 centimeters, half a meter long. You'll notice one of them is straight, and the other one has a coil here. We call that a loading coil. It's basically you've twisted the conductor around in an so that there's an inductor at one end of the of the antenna. So if we wanted to know what frequency the antenna should function at, the physical length is 50 centimeters, half a meter. So for a straight antenna, the it should be a quarter wavelength long, and that's half a meter, like we measured. And if you wanted to work that out, let's say okay, quarter wavelength is half a meter. That means the frequency should be 150 megahertz. Okay, that's how we do it. So then, if we know that, it should be 150 megahertz. I put a marker at 150 megahertz on the network analyzer here. If I take the straight one, this one here, and I put it into my mag mount, like that, and I look at the return loss, it looks pretty good at the frequency of 150 megahertz. Right, return loss is about 18 dB at 150 megahertz. So our prediction was correct. What I did up here came true if the antenna is straight. So now if I take this antenna and I remove that, so I'll take that out, and then I take the one with the loading coil, I'm just going to take that and put it in there. So now I've got same length, same physical length, but I've got the loading coil in there. What have I got here? Oh, I don't see anything there, so maybe... Maybe... Oh, look at that. So now, it looks like the antenna is functioning at a bit lower frequency, 92 megahertz instead of 150. So why would that be? That's because the loading coil is there. So what does that loading coil do? Well, the loading coil is an inductor, and inductors have inductive reactants over here. If you talk about antennas, if the antenna is too long, it's inductive, and if it's too short, it's capacitive. So if you were to add inductive reactants with the loading coil, the loading coil, makes the antenna inductive, so it makes the antenna too long, so you would have to end up cutting it shorter in order for it to stay resonant. So, I got my straight antenna. When that was connected, it, fun it resonated at 150 megahertz. This one, with the coil, 99 megahertz. So what I can do, since this is inductive, if I start cutting this thing shorter, I should be able to cut it until the frequency goes back up to 150 megahertz. So marker 1, 150 megahertz. See that marker there? I should be able to cut that thing shorter until it functions better at that frequency, and then we'll be able to see what happens. Okay, so I'll do this. I'll put another marker, marker 2. I'll put it where the antenna is working right now. Let me just cut this. Okay, I'll take this, and I'm going to cut some off. So it's gone up a little bit in frequency. Let's try it again. Going up some more. Yeah, let's keep doing this. Let's see what happens. A little bit, a little bit at a time. I don't want to cut too much off because If I do, it's harder to put it back on. So every time we do it, it ends up going higher in frequency. So what I can do, just to see about the progress, I can put another marker. So marker 2, that's where we used to be. Marker 1 is where we want to be. Marker 3 is where we are. Not much change there. 
A little bit. A little bit. Mm. We're getting there. I'm going to change my scale. A little bit more. Oops. Sensitive. Closer. So that's where we were. So marker three, I'll follow where, we, where we're going. So as I keep cutting it, this dip is going to move up and up and up. And when the dip is at marker one, then it's the same frequency as the straight one was before we started cutting. There we go. A little bit more. Getting closer. The antenna is getting shorter. Getting closer. Ooh, getting very close. So this antenna is much shorter than it was before. Now it's pretty much perfect. So now that antenna works best at 150 megahertz and see the size of it and now this antenna also worked best at 150 megahertz see the difference in length so what we've done was we've taken an antenna with a loading coil optimized it for operation at 150 megahertz and you can see that it's much shorter than the one that is straight and functioning at the same frequency and you'll find this with uh, long antennas. CB antennas are, are popular with loading coils because the quarter wavelength is about eight and a half feet long, which is a bit too tall for a lot of applications. So if it's too long, it's inductive. The loading coil makes it inductive. It makes the antenna too long, so you end up cutting it shorter to stay resonant. So if you put a loading coil, you can have a resonant antenna that is much shorter than the one that doesn't have a loading coil and it operates at the same frequency.